He was a world-renowned creator. He is still highly respected in the world of dogfighting. Today we are going to know a little about Joe Curvino. It is being written for you who are new. And that's starting with Pitbull, those whose phone bill is higher than their food. Just so you know more, from a pioneer of dogfighting. Before starting. For those who don't already know, no one was closer to Joe Curvino than I was. I feel I have earned the right to express my feelings and respect for Joe Curvino. Regarding the Masters, of Fighting Dogs. Joe was a hard-working man, he was always self-taught. He was always twenty years ahead. He was a hard-to-please man, always looking for ways to improve. Anything he was involved with, be it horseshoes, treadmills, or just the stuff of life, he was going to make the best of it. Joe's profession was a blacksmith. He had his shop right in the heart of Chicago. His shop was the last working blacksmith shop. Of all the dozens that have been in Chicago for many years. As a blacksmith, Joe surpassed all blacksmiths in the region. I lived two blocks from his store. At the age of nine, I got my first puppy. It was given to me by my uncle, who was very friendly with Joe Curvino. That's how I met Mr. Joe Curvino. I don't know why, but he liked me. And from that day forward, we stayed together until the last day of his life. As soon as class was over, I'd run straight to Joe's store. I was always scared because there were always bees near Joe's store. I opened the store door and walked towards the back. I saw people like none other than the dogmen Bert Klaus, the dogmen Mike Ferris, the dogmen Bill Cotton, the dogmen Pete Sparks, the dogmen Leo Kennard, the dogmen Jack and Vic Kelly. And I saw many other dogmen, high class in the world of pit bull fighting. Everyone always made a point of visiting Chicago. They always stopped by to see Joe, and it didn't matter how far away Joe was. His mailbox was always full of letters from professionals and newbies alike. I never missed a visit day, and that started the greatest experience of my life. Joe always took me with him, and we usually went a day early. To arrive before anyone else, and thus be able to see them arrive. Sonny, your first lesson. The only time a dogman tells the truth is when they call the other dogman a liar. And Sonny said, the papers don't make the dogs, it's the dogs that make the papers. He also said it to me many times. Never be surprised when a dog gives up, be surprised when they stay. When Joe would say these things to me, he would pause and say. You understood? Or is this too deep for you? One day I asked him, what was the fighting style he preferred in a dog? And he answered. A head-biting dog. And I further asked why. And he answered like this. Because the dog is where the opponent's weapons are. I spent many hours in that blacksmith shop, and it was worth every minute I had there. Joe was introduced to dog fighting, because in his day it was considered a sport. If Joe were among us, I'm sure, his pipe would be lit, to see some of today's dogs. People who bought dogs from Joe were always satisfied. You could buy a dog from Joe for a $5 down payment and pay $3 a week in installments. He had a passbook and every time you made a payment, he wrote it down in the passbook. One thing that's still on my mind to this day, what Joe told me was. Sonny, I wish you credit for producing the dogs I like and that I certainly got them from someone else, and they got them from someone else too. They just don't fall out of a tree. No one has a monopoly on good dogs and I know that. And every time I've put dogs to fight, it's been two hours or more. 
The knees of my pants were already worn out, and I no longer had a voice. But win or lose, their heads were always in the right direction. The kind of dogs that exist today, when I was active, you only saw them once in a while. But now everyone has a punisher, and I'm worried about people starting out. They really have a lot of work ahead of them. Joe never claimed to be better than his dog companion. But his dogs like his mats. To this day, they remain intact, and still function. How many out there can say that his lineage will still be sought after 25 years after his struggle? The great varieties of dogs today. And it doesn't matter what sellers want you to believe. They are descendants of the great varieties of dogs of the past. Curvino dogs have outlived their own generation. One important thing about Curvino dogs that Joe always said. It's just that they take time to mature. And that if you get a good dog, be patient. They peak at age three or even longer. He also highlighted conditioning and told me. Never put the dog to fight just to do something. I was closer to Joe than anyone else in his life. That's because he allowed it. Joe was 73 when he died, and he still kept dogs until his death. I still have all his old letters and pictures. And one day I might just put them in a book. If you learned anything from this article, tell your friends. If you haven't learned it, tell them anyway because it's better to be talked about than to be ignored. And like our watches, there may be two alike, but each one believes in its own. I do not promote, support or condone any violations of the Animal Welfare Act 1976, or any other local, state and federal law. I am not affiliated with dogfighting in any way, or in any way. I am simply a pet owner and enthusiast of the American Pit Bull Terrier, and the great history and legacy passed down through the generations. I believe it is important to know where we came from to know where we are going. Articles posted are strictly for historical and educational purposes. I do not necessarily represent the opinions expressed in these articles. My name is Rodolfo Luiz and I invite everyone to enjoy the knowledge of this wonderful breed. Sign up so you don't miss the next video. God bless you all. I went.